Welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Podcast. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. I'm here with Mr. Jeff Ard, who is both the incumbent and a candidate for Parish Council District 1. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, not as long of an intro as the morning show. We just did a live show on Facebook with him. We're now jumping in. Uh, Going to get a little deeper on some of the some of the subjects that we talked about this morning. Uh, but first, just going to let everybody know you can check these shows out on any podcast platform that you may have, uh, which includes Google Play or uh, um, Android. There it is. Sorry about that. Google Play is Android or Apple Podcasts, as well as our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. So, Mr. Ard, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your job, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I've uh, been married for 24 years. I uh, have two kids, a daughter and a son. Uh, my daughter graduated from Baton Rouge General. She's a RN. Uh, my son graduated from BRCC. Uh, he is a operator for a plant. Uh, they're both doing very well. I uh, have a beautiful granddaughter that's a year old. Um, that's where all my money goes these days. <laughs> and I, I love her dearly. So uh, I've been a supervisor since I was about 26 years old for an electrical company. Uh, been in the same plant for 23 years. Uh, now I'm kind of transitioning into some management roles, project mm -hmm. managing from superintendent. Uh, I've had people from numbers of 100 to 2 working under me, depending on big jobs, small jobs. I've had some some major jobs up in the five, six million dollar range. Uh, I, I do jobs, $2,000. Mm -hmm. you know, just whatever comes through the door, I handle them. I do estimating. I manage all the material buying all the funds for the projects, labor, uh, hire, fire, you know, I do it all. So, Jack of all trades. Everything. So, you know, I, before we get into talking about some of those individual things, how, how'd you get into that? Well, um, my grandpa actually was an electrician. Uh, I had a couple of cousins, older cousins that were electricians, got out of high school, uh, was supposed to go play football. That was all I'd planned on doing through school was go mm -hmm. play football. Uh, was kind of beat up when I got done with school and was, you know, just kind of lost that passion. And, uh, you know, if you remember back in the 80s, economy wasn't really that good. Mm -hmm. um, so my parents were kind of struggling a little bit, and I just felt like it was better for me to just go to work, help out. Uh, my older cousins got me a job in electrical work, and I just kind of took a liking to it. I understood it and just started rolling with it. Got my older brother in with me. Uh, so me and him have worked together ever since then. Uh, and then my two younger brothers are both in law enforcement, so them two have worked together. So we've kind of paired up, and <laughs> we, we do our thing together and sure. stick together. So What a family reunion. Uh, so, you know... You got into that line of work through family. You talked about a lot of things, uh, you know, especially with project management. I mean, it just sounds like you're you're constantly learning. Yes. And when we t when we've discussed your position as a parish councilman, we've discussed, you know, it's not it's not your normal job. No. And you you have to learn. And and so talk to us a little bit about your first your, your I guess you can, I don't want to call it a tour. You know, I don't I don't want to. I don't want to give it up on our servicemen and women, but your first run through, your first four years of being a parish councilman in the learning process. Well, the biggest thing, we didn't have a councilman with this current council that had experience as a parish council. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have two, Mr. Gerlinghouse, Mr. Wascom, that both served on city councils. Right. Uh, Gerlinghouse and Walker, Wascom and Denham. So they had a, a little bit of experience, at least on how the meetings ran, you know, to help us learn that stuff. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, it, it, a lot of our success is because of our clerk, Miss Sandy Teal. Mm -hmm. uh, she was definitely the the guide for us. Right. Because we leaned on her tremendously. You know, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> uh, but, you know, so we, we had that learning curve. Uh, one month into my first year, I had a tornado that tore up the town of Livingston. Um, 
Then three months into first year, we had the flood for Hog Branch right. that flooded all them people. Mm -hmm. and then 2016, August, everybody knows what happened. The major flood happened. That's still the first year. Right. Still the first year of our, us being in office. Well, then the second year, I think a month into it, I had a tornado that tore up Renegade Road. You know, so within the thir first 13, 14 months, I had major things that happened in my district that impacted me huge. But uh, as far as a disaster hitting, this council is well prepared for it now. Yeah. Uh, we definitely got that learning underneath our belt. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it kind of knocked us off base on really being able to do what the councilman should be doing because mm -hmm. it really become a lot of recovery. Everything was about recovery. Um, and I, I can remember uh, when you had Mr. John DuPont working for you, he came to me when I was a chairman in the third year and he, he asked me, he said, Jeff he said, I've noticed that it's kind of a little more turmoil, like in your meetings. He said, what is, what is your feeling on that? I said, well, I feel like, it's our first year to truly start doing parish business. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're finally getting done with recovery. We're getting down to the issues, and and now you're getting back to actually having your council work for you, right? Instead of just recovery, right? So it, you know, we we had a lot of that go on. I feel like you know this this last year we really starting to work the way a council should work, right? Uh, and, and that's why I kind of feel it is important to the parish to try to keep as many of us in there as we can so that we can continue working as a team i really feel like we've came together as a team and we've had our issues just like everybody else i mean we we have our little disagreements and arguments but um we don't publicize it we don't get out in front of the tv and and have a show for people uh we, we do it the way you're supposed to do it right you know we we state our case and if you lose a vote, you move on. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's it, the vote's over with. There's no reason to hold a grudge. You just move on and let's go to the next issue for the parish. And all that was kind of a, that, that's part of the learning experience, yes. right? Correct. And, yes. and, and and a lot of your learning experience, uh, you know, y'all learn a lot about a disaster, but then it's almost like you had to reset and learn about the, you know, dealing with parish issues. Mm, correct. So, you, you know, trying to trying to figure those things out. So a, as you're going through that learning process, you know, what made you decide to, to seek reelection? Well, because of the disaster, didn't really get to do a lot of the things I wanted to do. Right. You know, there there's some things that's unfinished. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I feel like that until they're finished, I'm not done here. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to continue doing the work for the people. I need to finish what I started. And, and I'm, you know, that's why I'm here. I, I want to, I want to have them four years where day one, I know what I'm doing. Right. And I can truly give the people what they're paying for. And that's the councilman to work for four years for them. Right. So how how are you feeling about your campaign? I know that you have an event uh, meet and greet tonight. Yes, I have a big uh, meet and greet tonight at uh, Livingston Country Club in Livingston. Mm -hmm. um, actually, uh, the sheriff and chief of Livingston are putting it on. Uh, I, I feel very good about my campaign. Um, I've I've had people that were uh, against me the last time that have welcomed me, put signs in their yard this time. Uh, I'm getting string a whole lot more acceptance this time. People know that, you know, I'm I'm doing this for the right reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I, because I love Livingston Parish. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my home. It's my children's home. You know, hopefully it'll be my grandchildren's home. Mm -hmm. uh, my, you know, a lot of people say this about my parents. They can't believe that, you know, they had four sons. You know, we all have kids. We're starting to get the great grandkids, mm -hmm. and every one of us still live right around our parents. Right. You know, nobody's left and ventured off. Uh, my oldest brother did move to St. Helena, but he bought our dad's parents' place back. Mm -hmm. You know, so just to keep that in the family. But I mean, it's not 20 minutes from my parents. So right. we're still all stay real close to my, my parents. Right. And, you know, you know, 
running for re-election in a place that you, you've lived in and want to improve, yes, right? Yes, correct. So, you know, when we're talking about learning in the parish council, you know, a big deal is y'all are the legislative branch, right? We're dealing with the home rule charter. What, you know, uh, in your opinion, you know, what, what are the positives and negatives of the home rule charter? Well, the, the biggest negative is I don't think the people truly understand home rule charter. Right. Um, and that was that was the biggest learning curve for me um, was people calling me to do things and, and I'm thinking I need to do them and I'm figuring out that's not my job. Right. You know, it's truly not. So um, it's really we need to educate the people more on what the Home Rule Charter is, what a councilman's job is, what the parish president's job is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of the, the older generation, they still see us as a police jury. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what you tell them, they still see you as a police jury. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I need something done, that's who I call. I call my police jury, but we're not. We're a council. We're a legislative body. We have a parish president that is over all administrative duties of this parish. Mm -hmm. He has people in place that you are to call for every issue. They work for him. Right. We have three ladies that work for us. Yeah. No, that's that's it. You no, know, we're, we're. It even says in the Home Rule Charter that we're not to instruct employees on what to do. Right. I mean, that is one of the line items in the Home Rule Charter. So, uh, we really need to educate the people on the Home Rule Charter. Right. So, you know, keeping. All those things in mind, what the whole Home Rule Charter says, your past experience and sort of your experience of the first four years, you know, you all have got, you have some individual things you're interested in with, with regard to your seat. And there's some, there's some council wide things that you'll be dealing with over the next four years, uh, should you be reelected, as I mentioned on the morning show, that seems to be the case. When you're talking about your individual seat, you know, what are some things that you are focused on going forward? Well, as I mentioned this morning, the biggest thing is Fire District 12. Um, we have to figure out a way to get this funded um, because it's one of the last districts that's not funded. Town of Livingston's been taking care of it. It's become too expensive for them to be able to handle. Uh, what we don't need is them to just pull up and say, we can't, we can't service y'all anymore. Right. Uh, because then everybody's insurance goes sky high. So uh, we definitely have to look into this, and, and I was that was one of my main priorities the last time, and we were actually, we then had two or three meetings on it, and then the flood happened. Right. You know, uh, also I had uh, Mr. Daryl Jones, who was the mayor of Livingston, he was involved with it, and in the meantime, he, he stepped down from being mayor, he, he got sick, he passed away, so it it just kind of tumbled on me, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people think, man, you had four years. When you're dealing with issues every day and it's really part time and you only have two meetings a month, uh, four years is not a long time. It goes really by not. quick. It goes by very quick. And I mean, you can quickly lose sight of something because something new pops up. Right. And, and you know, like you said, y'all dealt with several disasters in that mm -hmm. first year. And I mean, that'll, that'll take your time up. Yes. And it took a lot of time dealing with all that. So, you know, we also talked about uh, some things you, you had brought up, uh, and, and as you discussed, it may have been a little early, uh, funding for the Gravity Drainage District in part of your area. Mm -hmm. Part of your district is funded mm -hmm. through District 5. Correct. Uh, part of it is unfunded. But we've moved in this direction of parish-wide uh, drainage. Mm -hmm. You know, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, we, we've got to get parish-wide drainage foremost to protect the people of the parish. Right. I mean, that, that's the number one reason to do it. Uh, and and to, to do that, we have to get where well, we're working together as one. We can't be breaking it up in individual areas doing their own thing. We have to work as a team, as one, to drain our parish the best way we can. Uh, we have to figure out a way to make it fair for everyone to pay the same thing. Uh, I've heard some of the guys that are running for seats talk about doing a sales tax. 
to where everybody pays the same. Well, the problem with the sales tax is, is everybody spending their sales tax money in Livingston Parish? You know, because I know it's easier for the people in Albany and Springfield to just go to Hammond. Right. You know, it's easier instead of driving all the way to Jubin. Mm -hmm. I mean, it don't make sense. You go right there, I and mean, it's right by their house. Right. But you're helping Hammond fix their problems right. with your tax dollars. You're not helping Livingston Parish fix their tax dollars. Right. A lot of the people in the Marpaul area, they go into Ascension. Mm -hmm. Port Benson, they go into Ascension. You know, we still have people in the Denham area that go into Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's all the way around our parish where people need to realize now that we're starting to get the things that you need in our parish, the way you keep us from having to ask for more money is spend your money here. Right. Give us give us the tax dollars where we get more so we don't have to ask you for more. Right. Now, the only fair way that I've seen ever that gives you your people's tax dollars mm -hmm. is when you buy a new vehicle. Right. So no matter where you buy that vehicle, them tax dollars come back to where you live. Right. And there's no other fair way than that to get your tax dollars. Other than that, if you don't spend it here, right. we don't get that money. Right. And we'll get into the master plan in a minute, but one of the things that they did discuss is that two out of three people who lived here go somewhere else to work and under normal circumstances, spend their money there too. Mm -hmm. So that that's a lot of missed revenue on a just a daily basis. Correct, it is. So uh, you know, and we'll talk more about that when we get in the master plan. But you know, drainage is a big a big part of of your district. Uh, you know, yes. there's a couple of couple of currently a cleanup going on in Hornsby, and yes. one coming up with Coyell. Uh, so you, you got a lot of a lot of movement there. A lot, a lot going on. Which uh, Hornsby Creek, the the last I can figure out that anything was done in it was in ni nineteen ninety two. Right. Um, so it, nearly it was, thirty years ago. Yes, it it needed a major cleaning, and and it's getting it. Mm -hmm. But we still have, uh, I call it finger drainages that come off of it. Mm -hmm. That they probably were before. 892 that they were cleaned out last. I mean, I have some that have full-grown trees growing in the center of the canal. Oh, gosh. You know, and, I mean, when you get a big rush of rain, that's impacting it. That's mm -hmm. slowing it down. Mm -hmm. You know, but because of the way this money works with FEMA, we have to do what they told us to do first. Yeah. We have to completely do everything they said they did. So we get that money. Mm -hmm. We pay the contract. And that's done. Then we can come back and look at the areas that were not done and figure out how we can fund this and get them cleaned out. Uh, and they have laundry list of requirements. Yes, they do. And I don't know if you're the same way, but anytime I think 30 years, I'm thinking 1970 for some reason. And, for what, <laughs> and that's just not true. Yeah. You know, 1992 was 27 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so it's it, it has been quite a while. Uh, so you've got that work occurring, but as you mentioned on the morning show, uh, you know, needing that parish-wide drainage also means maintenance. Correct. You know, this is the first time this has happened in 30 years. And as Congressman Garrett Graves mentions all the time, you can't rely on disasters to come through and for these windfalls of cash to come. And that's the biggest thing we need our people to understand. You know, yeah, we're getting a lot of money right now, but we cannot depend on that to be our source. Right. You know, we if we want to protect our parish, we all have to pitch in. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, everybody has to pitch in. Do we need to look at the money we already get? We probably do, but we can't just say, hey, we have a surplus of money over here. Let's use it on drainage. Right. If that was collected for something by a tax, you can't just use it where you want. Yeah. The people said this is for a library. Mm -hmm. That's what it has to be spent on in the library system. We can't just take that money without the vote of the people and move it somewhere else. Right. So we're kind of restricted on how we can spend the money because you got to spend it how it was collected. Right. And you have to spend it in the area of where it was collected. You know, I've, I've also heard some of the candidates say, you know, Denham collects all this money. Why can't we use it in the other district? Well, you're not supposed to. Right. It's supposed to stay where it's collected. Right. You know, 
Which, you know, I mean, there are a lot of denim people that would be a little upset, you right. know, if they heard that. And I'm sure there are people who have heard it and are upset. I, you know, so what, talking about tax collection, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot, big anti-tax sentiment here in Livingston Parish right now. Big. Within what you were discussing two parish council meetings ago, uh, Mr. Shane Mack wanted to discuss that. It, it, it got squashed. Nobody wanted to talk about taking funds from one, which would be the library, and putting it towards something else. Uh, which also, you know, the library property taxes are par- it's a parish wide collection. Correct. So you'd have you'd have problems there because you got to mm-hmm. spend it where it's collected. So within that discussion, it also came up that the road tax many of the many of the councilmen didn't want it on the spring ballot. Recently, parish president Leighton Rick said, "Okay, we won't put it on the spring ballot. We're going to put it on the fall." Talk to us about that. Well, the the whole purpose of that is, is we want it on a big election right we truly want to know what the people are thinking in our parish right I mean, and you get a presidential election we got a presidential election should get a lot of people to the polls uh we can really find out what what are people thinking yeah. you know i mean because it's one of them things if you if you deny it we're not doing something right right um but people really need to have to realize what they're mm-hmm. denying they're pretty much they're not denying just black top going on top of the road mm-hmm. you know you're you're denying the the ditches on the side of the roads mm-hmm. you know because it's also drainage of ditches uh you're just you're denying a, a quarter cent that goes to the jail it funds the jail mm-hmm. of the tax uh you're you're taking money away from dpw mm-hmm. so the people that you call to say come clean my ditch come fix this pothole in the road, them services are not going to be there. Yeah, They'll be there, but instead of us having 200 employees, we might only have 50 employees. Yeah, You know, you're going to shrink the, the amount of people that we have to do this work. Right. You know, and you're going to wind up having one guy that's trying to drive a dump truck to where he has a backhoe set up you know, clean the ditch, put it in the dump truck, and he's got to get back in the truck, drive it, dump it where it's going. You got one man trying to do this work, and it's going to take us forever to keep up with this parish. Well, you won't be able to. We will not be able to. And, you know, it's, it's important to note, especially since in 2021, uh, bonds that were issued in, in the mid-2000s to do a very large amount of overlay uh, will be paid. And, you know, as this administration has said, they will not be pushing to rebond or anything of that nature. Going to be focused on the four and a half million that will be put in the coffers. Uh, one of the projects that we discussed during the morning show, uh, and this will be the last thing we talk about before break, is you talked about um, culvert replacement, a large amount of culvert replacement. And you talked about that through the road program. So let's jump into that. Tell us how you came about that idea and, and you know, what's going to happen. The, the example you gave about, you know, especially small culverts from 50, mm-hmm. 60 years ago was a good one. So so start with where you learned about it. All right. Well, I have very good friends, the councilman for West Baton Rouge. Uh, they were the ones that kind of come up with this program. He said, man, we were getting hammered so much about drainage, drainage, drainage. We just come up one year and said, you know what? No road, no road overlay this year. Mm-hmm. All we're going to do is work on drainage. Mm-hmm. We're going to go alongside of our roads, and we're going to do a culvert upgrade program. And he said, as they sent the engineers out, what they started noticing was you had these culverts that were put in 50, 60 years ago. And they're 12-inch, 10-inch pipes, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the issue. If we can get these, these culverts drained, and it might not fix everything, but it's going to fix a lot. Yeah. Uh, and he said they had subdivisions that flooded every single time it rained. And now they have no calls from these subdivisions. All the water gets through the subdivisions and it drains correctly. And when I say subdivision, I'm talking about ones that were built 60 years ago. Yeah. Subdivision, old subdivision. So when he told me that, I started riding around the parish when it rains and, and trying to find where water's backing up. And, and I noticed that's a lot of the issues. A lot of the issues is these small culverts. We even have areas where someone might have a pasture. They put a gate up and they just fill the ditch in. Right. There's not even a culvert there. Right. You know, so there's a lot of issues that's just in our ditches along the side of our roads that will make a huge difference. And especially the little neighborhoods that are flooded. Right. Um, and 
you know, these big, big, big developments get built, they do their drainage system to where so many gallons comes out, you know, and it might be a 24, 36 inch pipe that comes out. Well, mm-hmm. then you got Momo and Popo right there that's got a 10 inch pipe. Guess who's flooding? I mean, it's going to come over their driveway. It's going to back all up into their yard. So the, the people that's been living here longer are the ones suffering. But I don't think it's their responsibility because when they put that culvert in, they probably put it in by what the standards were then. Sure. You know, because it might, they might have been the only house on that road for miles when they put that in. Right. So I think we need to help with that. Right. You know, we need to go in, make do this program, upgrade the culverts, make them bigger. Uh, now, I'm not talking a, a crushed one. You know, that's that's your culvert. It's crushed. You need to fix that. Right. But if we come through a road and we're repairing four or five, we could go to these people that have the ones that are crushed and say, hey, if you go on and get your culvert, while we're mm-hmm. coming through here, we'll we can go on it. and put it in and get it all taken care of. I think there's a couple of roads that the parish president and them are actually doing that right now, which I think Dunn Road might be one of them. Yes, it is. Where they told them, you know, they went to the ones that needed new culverts and told them, hey, here, buy you culvert, have it ready. When we come through here, we'll take care of putting them all in for you, and we'll have this road drained them properly before we spend all this money. Overlay. Putting a new overlay on it. Yeah, they're doing a lot to Dunn Road. Uh, that yeah. includes uh, some large box culverts on the north side of the road, trying to get water from one side to the other. You yeah. know, and I mean, you know, regular culverts are one thing, but uh, those box culverts, you know, it's interesting how that works. There was one situation uh, in the Clinton Allen watershed where DOTD just walked right on in and uh, <laughs> went from a 36 inch to a 72 inch like that. And then yeah. all of a sudden the folks downstream were like, where's all this water coming from? Yeah. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, we're also going to jump into the master plan uh, a little bit before we, uh, before we let you go okay. here after the break. So please, uh, again, we're here with Councilman uh, Jeff Ard. He's an incumbent and a candidate for District 1 of the Parish Council. Uh, he and I will be right back after the break. And we're back. I'm here with Parish Council District 1, Mr. Jeff R. Uh, he is the incumbent and also running for re-election. Uh, we took a quick break. We're now back. We're going to talk about the master plan, which right. was just passed. Uh, and then we'll get into a couple of uh, uh, questions about the council, and then we'll We'll wrap up for today. Uh, so this past meeting, uh, which was two thir- or a week ago, this Thursday, today, uh, y'all passed the 2013 Envision Livingston Master Plan. As you mentioned on the morning show, and, to, and I think earlier, more guidelines than actual rules. Yes. Uh, need some updating and things of that nature. But the initial push is for zoning. Uh, that was the proponent, uh, Tracy Gerlinghouse. That, that, that's what he's after. Most of his district is already zoned. He's just looking to get the rest of it. For the rest of y'all, it will be twofold. Uh, for you, as you mentioned earlier, uh, about 25 to 30% of your district is zoned, having to talk to people and educate them about that in other parts. But you also have a piece that's part of the, uh, I guess you can call it the commercial corridor mm-hmm. or the, you know, the, the main corridor through the parish uh, that they are looking for, you know, heavy zoning to turn into the gateway. So let's start, let's start there. Let's start with the corridor and then let's move into you talking with residents about zoning and what's coming up. All right. Well, the, the corridor that runs through the parish, um, as I said before, it, it, it's very, it's a very good place to start. Mm-hmm. Because we have every type of property that we have in our parish is in that corridor, mm-hmm. uh, so that that helps us kind of really figure out how which direction we need to go with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say the majority of the rest of the parish will either be rural or residential. Uh, one of the two is what all the rest of it. I mean, that's how we'll have to start, mm-hmm. and then we'll start working from there. Uh, you know, you have some areas in my area, Walker North. You know, along Walker North, probably up to about the Kane Market intersection, that's probably going to have to be commercial because it's already commercial. Right. You know, we have a concrete plant, we have stores, I mean, all that stuff along through there. Uh, one of the ways that we want to do it is we want to actually give the people the opportunity to say, how do you want to zone your property? Right. You know, so you get this one time 
you tell, tell us how you want to zone. Right. You know, now when you get ready to sell it, it might have to sell as commercial. Right. But while you're living here right now, if you want it to be rural, we can put it rural. Right. You know, um, so we we can kind of give them that that option to get the ball rolling and get it started. But back on the corridor, that's where we want to try to push our light industrial that we have, our our big commercial developments and stuff. We want to try to keep them in that corridor. Mm -hmm. Try to keep them from being in people's backyards. Um, we already kind of have a light industrial area, which is over around by the landfill. We have Martin Breyer over there, uh, CEIs over there, uh, waste management. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know what the plant is now. It used to be Sunland. It's done changed names like 10 times. Right, right, yeah. You know, but that pipe and manufacturing that's over there, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of big trucks that come out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that me and Tracy Gerlinghouse has talked a lot about is trying to extend 449 straight to the interstate, mm -hmm. which would be a feed for that corridor without having to go through a city or a town. Right. It keeps it out of the municipalities, gives these big trucks a route straight to the interstate. Right. I think it would actually help us bring more businesses right there in that area because I know if I'm an owner of something like that and I can put my business where my trucks don't have to go through a municipality to get on the interstate, I think that's a good selling point right there. Yeah. But we're going to have to work with the state on that. That, that would be... You know, we haven't built a new road in our parish in forever. Right. I think it's, uh, it's been 100 years. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that would be a huge one that would help with the corridor. I know the Juban extension also would be something that helps the corridor. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we're going to focus on this, then we have to get some new ways to get in and out of it to, to help the traffic. Right. Because you know, it could bring the type of businesses that we want in our parish to give our people jobs where they don't have to drive into Baton Rouge or drive down to New Orleans or over in the Hammond. They can stay right here. Right. And that's the whole purpose of it. You know, and the biggest thing is, you know, Envision Livingston is a guideline. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not any kind of law. You know, it doesn't say we have to do it this way. It just gives you a guideline how to implement parish-wide drainage, parish-wide sewer. You know, it's going to help us become a parish instead of an east side, west side, north side, south side. Right. You know, we, we can actually bring everybody together and be one parish and start working together to better the whole parish. And, you know, we'll, we'll get more into that in a minute because there were two pieces of it that uh, one is we've already talked about. It's parish-wide drainage. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of caught it up in committee. You're on that committee. Uh, the other one is parish-wide sewer, uh, you know, w which had some interesting implications. And, and we'll get to that in a minute. But when we're talking about zoning for your individual district, as you mentioned to me before, uh, you've traveled around, and a lot of it is more about education than anything else. You know, people worried about, what I can and can't do with my property. So talk to us a little bit about that, knowing that about 25 to 30%, mostly on the, the south and western portion of the parish are already zoned. Yeah. Well, the, the the biggest thing is most people, when they hear zoning, they hear the government's going to tell me what I can and can't do with my land. Mm -hmm. You know, and in reality, the way I look at it is, no, I'm just going to tell you what you can't do. Mm -hmm. What you cannot do that will impact your neighbors. Right. And in return, the same thing goes for your neighbor. Mm -hmm. So I can, you want to come build a $500,000 home out in the country and be all by yourself. You don't have to worry about somebody coming in and building a concrete plant right next to you. Right. A gravel pit, a shooting range. You know, none of that stuff would be allowed in a rural area. Right. You know, and right now we don't have the authority as a council to stop that. We have ordinances. If you want to build a concrete plant, here's the ordinances to build it. Right. And if you do all that, we can't stop it. Right. You know, this is going to give us that authority to protect your your home, your property. I mean, it will give that council a little authority to help stop that type of stuff. Right. 
So when we're talking about things like parish-wide drainage, parish-wide sewer, and in and, and a certain effect, starting with that economic corridor and zoning and, and flexing out into these different districts, because it, it does appear that that's the way it's going to work. Mm -hmm. It's going to, zoning will be a district by district basis. Yeah. Uh, you know, how do you feel this council, this core group, which came in and replaced all the, the council before it, how do you think it's, it's changed and come together over these past four years? Well, the biggest thing is, as I said before, we really didn't have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we were looking at each other, leaning on each other, trying to figure things out as a group. Mm -hmm. It really made us work as a group. Mm -hmm. so we, we truly had to do this as a team. Uh, we were on the phone all the time. What did you find out? What have you found out? I mean, I read this. This is the way I understood it. So, I mean, we truly did it. At, I mean, we were working as a team. We were figuring these issues out. Uh, we had a lot of help from our clerk, Ms. Sandy Till. I mean, she was the one we leaned on the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and she she kept us within the guidelines. You know, y'all 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 can't do that. You're, you're getting a little out of your boundary. Right. You need to will it back in. So, I mean, she never, like, told us what to do, but she kept us in our area that we needed to stay. Kind of like zoning. Just like zoning. You know, <laughs> she, she made sure that we, we didn't step over the boundaries. Uh, and I really feel like that it was beneficial for the parish that we had to learn it together instead of having one or two people that just listen to what I say. Right. You know, I, I've been here for 10 years. I know what I'm talking about. We didn't have any of that. Right. I mean, we were from from day one of electing the chairman for the first year. You know, we're all looking around like, who's going to do this? Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, John Wascombe had the most experience on the city council. So, mm -hmm. John, do you mind doing it the first year? Sure, I'll do it the first year. And then the next most experienced was Tracy Gardenhouse. So he became the co-chair and then the chair the following year. And then we just kind of started rolling it and people getting to where we were understanding everything that's going on because you don't know the job until you've had the job. Right. I mean, you, you can sit out there and I say that to all the candidates, you truly don't know. You know, we had a forum uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. One of the last questions was, if you could ask any candidate a question, what would you ask them? And mine was, do you truly have the time to do this job? Because mm -hmm. you think it's part-time. Mm -hmm. No, it's a full-time job with part-time pay. <laughs> That's right. what it is. Right. You know, so they look at it as a part-time job because we're paid as part-time employees. But when that phone rings, people won't talk to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and look, I, I have a job where most of the time I can just step to the side, answer the phone. Typically what I do is I let it go to voicemail. And the moment I get off of work, I call every single person back that leaves me a message. Right. If you text me, message me on Facebook, or you leave a message, I'm calling you back. Yeah. You know, I might not be able to help you. Mm -hmm. I might have to send you to someone else. But that's been the number one thing that I've done, tried the most to make sure I do is call people back. Right. You know, I also have another little scenario. The night I won my election last time, you know, this is three months before you take office. Mm -hmm. You know, I win the election. The next day, I don't know if you remember, it started flooding that night. Mm -hmm. The next day, I was standing knee deep in an old man's yard that was flooded. He had already called me. I need you to come look at this. You know, I'm not even a councilman yet. Right. But I'll come out there and look at your problem and see if I can help you. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of guys just don't really realize what the job entails. Do, mm -hmm. You know, do you truly have time to do this? Right. Because you're going to, one time, it's gonna you're going to have to step away from your regular job mm -hmm. and be able to help people. Mm -hmm. And we really saw that during the flood. Yeah, you know, we truly had to step away from our jobs, you know, and we have two councilmen that's not running for reelection, mm -hmm. you know, and I think a lot of it's based on the fact that they realize I really don't have the time for this.
Yeah. And I think, honestly, both of them in their heart just realize it's not fair to my people. Right. It's not fair to my people that I can't give them the time that they deserve. Right. And I think that's why they both have stepped, stepped aside. Right. Uh, so, and I tell the other ones, you know, do you really have time to do this? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it's a good question. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Mr. R, we appreciate you joining us for this longer version of the yeah. show. Is there anything you'd like to add before we, uh, uh, we no, adjourn? Um, anybody in the Livingston area got a meet and greet tonight at the uh, Livingston Country Club, uh, 6 to 8. Um, get out and vote. Early voting's going on now through Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, elections next, sa- next Saturday, the 12th. Mm-hmm. It'll be a busy day. We've got a lot of stuff going on, parish and state that day. Mm-hmm. So if I was you and I could get to a poll before Saturday, I will go on and get that over with. Uh, you just don't want to get caught up with life, and next thing you know, you wasn't able to vote. Right. Uh, and I'm just I'm asking the people of District 1, give me four more years. Let me continue what I started and uh, help make Livingston Parish a better place to live. Yes, sir. So thank you. Thank you for joining us, Mr. R. He is the incumbent and uh, also running for re-election in District 1. It's a central district, uh, kind of large anchor on the north side of the parish. Uh, the As he mentioned, early voting is running through this Saturday. We've actually surpassed 2015's early voting total already with three days left, plus one of them is a weekend day. So it should be interesting to see where we land. Uh, please remember that uh, on Election Day, October 12th, as he mentioned, it's going to be a busy day. So please get out and vote. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you joining us for another edition of the Linux Parish News Podcast. Got to sit down with Mr. Jeff Ard here, uh, who is a parish councilman running for re-election. Tomorrow we will have Mr. J. Rogers Pope on the morning show and doing a podcast, so you'll get to check him out. Then uh, you can always catch these on any podcast platform on Google Play, which is for Android, Apple Podcasts, as well as Anchor FM. We also have put them online, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. There are audio and video versions there, and they are free. Thanks for joining us, and we will catch you next time.